10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Stage one proposal nominal. The Harvest Goddess is on her way to space for IQPS. Electron has launched cleanly off the pad at Launch Complex 1 and is now coming up against 700 kilometers per hour in just a second. We should hear from our operators that Electron has reached max Q, which is the point in the flight when Electron is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic, it's the first milestone as we listen out for the launch. So let's bring up the audio channels now from MCC. Cleared Max Q. That was a nice clean HPP pass through Max Q for Electron, and we are now about a minute or so away from staging and main engine cutoff on the first stage. Now, what should happen next is that all nine Rutherford engines on the bottom of stage one will shut down as planned, and just a couple of seconds or so before the stage second stage is released is from its separation locks. Once we are clear of the first stage, the Rutherford speed. engine on stage two will ignite to propel Electron and IQPS onward to our target altitude for this mission. Let's keep an eye out now for the view across both stages as those stage events one, take place. Stage one holding nominal, stand by for Miku in roughly 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to staging. Intent burnout detect mode. Miko confirmed. Stage separation complete. Stage two ignition confirmed. A clean separation from the first stage as planned and a beautiful start up there by the Rutherford engine on the second stage. That second stage's velocity is now at more than 8,000 kilometers an hour with an altitude of 95 kilometers after that separation event. Next up will be fairing separation for Electron when the rocket's nose cone halves split and fall away to expose the Kushinada payload to space for the first time. Fearing Judison confirmed. And there you have it, Electron's Stage two, two fairing halves have jettisoned from Electron and on your screen you'll see the Harvest Stage Goddess safely attached to the kick stage and ready to make her debut on orbit. Taking a look now at the propulsion monitoring camera at the bottom of stage two shows that HPP Rutherford is continuing nominally, nominally since engine startup, which happened just a few moments ago. We have another five minutes to go for the second stage engine burn until the next separation event. This Rutherford engine's performance can reach up to 5,800 pounds of force in the vacuum conditions of space with a specific impulse of 343 seconds. Now specific impulse is a measure of performance in telling us how efficient an engine can be.
One of the pretty special things about both our sea level and vacuum optimised Rutherford engines is that they're actually battery powered. The propellant pumps on these engines are driven by brushless DC motors powered by batteries. Now since the amount of time the second stage engine needs to run is longer than the capacity of the first battery packs, Electron needs to perform a power switch over to a fresh set of batteries to keep the engine running. The flight computer does this while the engine is still burning hot, that's why we call it the battery hot swap. In a few moments you should hear that call out from our launch operators and if you keep an eye out on your screen you should see those batteries eject in the next few moments. HVB stretch holding nominal approaching hot swap in roughly 30 seconds. Throttling down. Battery jettison confirmed. Confirm hot swap successful. Nice and clean with that battery hot swap there and one of the final launch milestones completed on Electron for its 69th mission to space. We are cruising along now at 15,000 kilometers an hour at 220 kilometers in altitude. Just two more key events remain for this first stage of the mission. That is SECO or second engine cutoff followed by stage separation where Electron's kick stage separates from the second stage and gets ready to deploy the payload into orbit. We're getting some stunning views of Earth from space from our onboard cameras. We, touch, we touched on it a little bit at the start of the show, but right now Electron is running fully autonomously. What that means is our extremely talented GNC engineers have completed all the analysis to determine how to get to the specific place in orbit. And right now Electron's flight computer is running its algorithm in real time to fine tune its performance and land Kushinada 1 on its final deployment orbit. Right, so we are approaching eight minutes into flight and you can see on the right of your screen Electron's second stage has around 13% of propellant remaining. Much like the first stage, there's no sense in carrying dead mass to orbit. So shortly we will separate the kick stage and payload from stage two. We are soaring now past 22,000 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 230 kilometers above Earth. With less than a minute left on this engine burn, we're approaching Seco. The engine on your screen there will power down and shut off just a moment before the kick stage is separated into a transfer orbit. Now it may sound simple, but this is a very precise maneuver and it's important that the kick stage is exactly where it needs to be for the next phase of the mission. Let's listen back in to mission control for that Seco call and stage separation confirmation. Seco confirmed. Nominal transfer orbit achieved. Stage separation confirmed. 